All right, microphone testing one, two. Today we are excited once again to look at another topic in the CSEC uh, webinar series brought on by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Today we are looking at travel graphs and I am your one of two presenters this afternoon. I, along with Mr. David McFarlane, I am Ken Roy Wilson, and today we are the ones who will be carrying you through this real time, real life, up close and personal uh, CSEC workshop. We are looking at travel graphs. All right, the names there on the screen, Mr. Wilson, myself, and uh, Mr. McFarlane. <clears throat> so we are interested in a few things this afternoon. Specifically, we are interested in interpreting distance time graphs. We also want to be able to solve problems with distance time graphs. A lot of the times we see graphs on YouTube, we see graphs in class or in general, and we are somewhat curious about them. Or at times we are a little bit, uh, what would I say, hesitant to attempt such problems. But by the end of this, this, this session, we are hoping that that all of that would have been eliminated or mitigated somewhat. So there are some things that we need to do, need to know, and those are drawing graphs of a linear function. We also need to know how is it that we determine the gradient of a straight line? You, you recall those terms, students? Gradient, do you know it by another name? For instance, slope? Well, it is both are one in the same. And um, that is what we'll be using this afternoon as we go through and we look at our, our session and our content in our session. We have, people in the chat we have that chat option we are also aware that we are live on youtube so we are in the youtube chat as well so whatever questions you might have whatever concerns you might be thinking about don't be afraid don't be afraid any at all to just you know give us a hint give us ask your questions in the chat we are there we are live we are listening out we are ready and willing to take your responses, All right? So don't be afraid. We are seeing in the chat already uh, a Jamar, um, that looks like McLeish. Yes, Jamar, we are seeing you in the chat. You are sending greetings and we are seeing others as well popping up. So we are there, we are live in the chat. So let us get into it. We want to do a skills check and our skills check this afternoon will take into consideration a scenario, a particular scenario that we'll all be somewhat familiar with as the, the summer months are rolling on. We would have noticed already that the days are a little bit warmer than what we are genuinely accustomed to. And um, with this in check, with this in mind, we have this scenario where we're talking about a temperature. So the temperature at dawn, it was eight degrees Fahrenheit. And then this increased steadily for two degrees Fahrenheit every hour. So these are the two things that I want you to do, whether it be conceptually thinking about it or doing so with your pencil and papers. And as a matter of fact, students, if you don't at this point have your pencil, have your pen or your books or your paper, I want you to take just 10 seconds. I'll give you 10 seconds to just grab them, open them up in front of you and get ready because you are in class, right? Even though we are on YouTube, even though we are on Zoom, we are not, this is not a movie. This is a, a real life thing where you need to take, um, you need to take part. So go ahead, get your books, get your pencils. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to fill in the space while you do that and let us get ready. So by now you should be back and you should be ready. So the first thing or the, the, the main thing that we want to do from this little scenario, this little activity 
is we want you to determine the gradient. All right, to think about the gradient of that line. Do you recall what gradient is? Hmm. I bet some of you are thinking right now, I bet some of you are rocking those brains. Do you recall how to calculate gradients? I can imagine some of you saying right now, um, it's rise over run, it is the, the vertical change um, divided by the horizontal change. I, I can imagine some of you saying no, that it's it's what Sir or it's what Miss taught you just a year ago or, or just last week based on how um, frequently or how often you would have been reviewing your, your content. So let's get into it. I think we are ready, ready by now. So I want you to determine the gradient of this line that will come out of this little scenario here. So let's go right at it. We have a graph that is already pre-drawn to somewhat match what you would be sketching or what you would have been sketching just now after we would have talked. Does it look like this? Do we have time on the horizontal axis and temperature on the vertical axis? Is this what your graph looked like? Do you have the change in temperatures going up and the change in time running across from left to right? Do we have that? Any, any responses over the YouTube there, Mr. Mack? Any responses in our Zoom chat? Any responses as yet? Not yet. So waiting for some still waiting for some so is I, i'm guessing that is just the pleasantries um that are coming through right about now all right nevertheless so here we see the the graph here it's being represented in a very nice way with the scenario that we would have just discussed we notice here that on our graph we are seeing that time gap. We are seeing a time gap of a maximum of up to 20 hours. And we are seeing on the temperature and the degrees Fahrenheit, we are seeing a maximum temperature of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Wait, there are also on some. One minute, Mr. Wilson, I see somebody in the YouTube chat said that they're still drawing. Geneva they're still drawing. They're drawing. Yeah. So, so, so maybe we, we, we would have gone ahead a little bit too quickly. Yeah. We should have given them a chance to, to kind of sketch it out. Is it that they're drawing the one that we have? Or is it that they're drawing one of their own to discuss the scenario, to, to think about the scenario on their own, in their own little way? All right, Miss Thompson. Hurry up and draw. Yes, we, we are very much aware with what's going on in the, in the chat on all levels. All right, so let us give them about a minute, a minute and a half, you think? Just finish up their drawings, right? Right, so Mr. Wilson Jenny is in the chat. She says that she's finished. Oh, she's finished. Mm -hmm. All right, great, great, great. All right, great, Geneva. So we, we'll use her as a benchmark to, to know who is finished or, or not. By the time she's finished, I'm guessing that everybody should be finished as well. So here we have our graph. We're representing the scenario as was stated. So realize that the temperature is changing. Right, as the day goes on, the temperature, you know, the day is going to get hotter. In the morning, it's usually nice and cool where you can go out and take a walk. But, but by the time it, 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 it's 12 o'clock, it's 11 o'clock, you know, that they, they start to get really, really hot and really uncomfortable. And this is the time of day that most of us, we either sit under the fan or if we are fortunate enough, we have our AC units where we can relax beneath and, you know, we can kind of escape. So, as we are seeing here, uh, is there anything of note, students, anything about this graph that you are curious about? Is there anything that you notice? Anything that you think is anything that threw you off a little bit? 
does it look like what you have? So these are a few questions coming at you. So I, I think I'll go back to the first question. Is there anything that you notice about this graph? Anything at all? No? Nothing noticed? Did our graph look like the one that you sketched? Given that you didn't sketch this one after you saw it on your screen. Are you seeing a temperature increase? That's a, that's a caller coming in. <laughs> On line one, hello, caller. Go ahead. No? <laughs> well, it seems as though all our students this afternoon, they are on par and on track with what is going on here. You would have noticed that the scale on our graph, it would have been skipping out or missing out some numbers. Not that they are hidden, not that they are hidden, but it's just that it takes a little bit of interpretation. And I'm seeing um, Ms. Thompson there over on YouTube saying that time is placed on the x-axis. Indeed, time is placed on the x-axis. Do you know why? Has anybody ever thought about why is it that we, we place time on the x-axis? Why not put it on the y-axis? That's a million dollar question. Well, let me, let me careful how I state figures here because um, we're not in the comfort of a, of, a, of a private classroom anymore. We are out there for everyone to see. So lest anybody go think that we have a million dollars given away, let me be careful there. But that's the big question. Why is it that time is on the X axis? Why not put it on the Y axis? Hmm. You can think about that as we, we go through. So let us look at the calculations here. We realize or we, we are genuinely or are generally thought that gradient speaks to that vertical difference or the rise, as you might know it, as it is being compared to the run or that horizontal difference, as we might know it. So here we are seeing, um, we are seeing that the time here and the temperature here, we are recognizing that there are some changes that took place. Can anyone tell us or can anyone just type in the chat, any one of the chats? What is the difference? What is the temperature change from that first point to that last point? By how much did the temperature change? What is that temperature change? It started at a particular temperature and then the last measurement that we got was at another temperature. By how much, what was the change there in temperature? Mr. Wilson, I'm seeing in the chat on YouTube, Geneva had answered your question earlier, saying mm -hmm. that we cannot stop time. Um, and then Tushana is just asked in the Zoom chat, is just asking for a little clarity. She says that she's not so clear. Okay, a little clarity. And well, then well, finally, sorry, Kahina Clark on the YouTube chat is saying fine. It is? Kahina Clark is saying that a change in temperature is five. Uh, King Arthur Docs on YouTube is saying it's going up by four. Okay, okay. Quite a few responses. Yeah. So quite a few responses saying that it's going up by five and going up by four. Yes. Okay. So if you if you I, I, I'll address the this the Zoom question first, the Zoom chat question first. We are looking at this graph, right? And we are looking at two axes, the vertical axis that has a temperature. So if you, if you, if you 
tilt your head to the right a little bit, you will be able to read off that vertical, on the vertical axis where you're seeing temperature. The question that was being asked was, what is the change in temperature? We, we realized that the first temperature point that was recorded was eight degrees Fahrenheit. And you know that temperature goes up or go down. So if it, go, if it went up from 20 degrees Fahrenheit to uh, 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 the last recorded temperature there of 20 degrees Fahrenheit, what is the temperature change? And same too could have been asked about the time. What's the time difference? We, we, we started off at, uh, when we started to record our temperatures, we can call that the initial time and then we stop at a particular value of time. So we are thinking now about the changes in time and temperature. What are those two changes? And I think we got the answer for the temperature already. Um, did we? Did we not? Or did we get the, the interpretation of the scale? I think, we got, I think we got the interpretation of the scale where somebody said that it was going up by four. It's That's going what? up by four. Yes. All right, indeed, indeed. So the, the, the change here that we are that is being recorded or that is being displayed on the graph is that it is going up by four. Yes, from, from eight degrees Fahrenheit to 12 degrees Fahrenheit, 16 to 20. That, that, that gap there, as you're seeing in terms of the numbers themselves, is going up by four. But are there numbers in between those other numbers that you are seeing? As you take one step, as you, as you move one place up on the vertical axis, as you move one place across on the horizontal axis, is it going up by four or is it going up by another number? Body? And you're just seeing four being marked at each place. Which is it? In the, in the Zoom chat, Kushana is agreeing with the first thing that they had said. Okay. What about over on YouTube? Have, have we gotten, have we arrived at our answers as yet? In YouTube. And I'm not talking the overall answer because I know somebody probably worked it out already. But we want those incremental answers that lead up to the overall result. In YouTube, Samesh, Samesh Sharma is saying 20 to 8 is the temperature change. And Geneva is saying the change in temperature is 2. It's eight. She's saying, no, eight, it's a, it's a, it, yeah, change in temperature is two. The eight was a mistake. So she's saying that it's two. Okay. Assume okay. that she's talking about the change um, per hour. All right. All right. That, we, we, can, we can work with those. We can work with those responses. So, indeed, the temperature rose from eight degrees Fahrenheit to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. If it rose from 8 degrees Fahrenheit to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, then to figure out the temperature change, you would have to say 20 degrees Fahrenheit subtract 8 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we look at the time, if we realize that the, the, the time lapse was from a time of zero to a time of between four and if it's going up by four and if we go between four and eight, what do you think the value is right there. What do you think? How many hours, or what's the stated hour right there? If 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 we are if if we realize that it, it landed between four and eight, we're going up by four, and it drops. It landed as you can see there between four and eight. What do you think that value is between those two numbers? Anyone? In the chat, I've got uh, receipt and Sanders are saying six. They're all saying six, indeed. So the, the, the time difference there, or the, the, the time lapse there is six hours. So from zero to six hours, we realize that that would be our horizontal difference, or six hours subtract four hours. And then the vertical difference would have been 20 degrees Fahrenheit subtract eight degrees Fahrenheit. At the end of the day, you should get 12 degrees Fahrenheit divided by six hours. And uh, the, the rate that you are seeing, the, the, the rate of rise that you'll be seeing at the end of the day when you would have done your calculations, 
would be two degrees Fahrenheit per hour. So, so here, the gradient here is mapping. It's mapping a temperature change as the day goes on. Now, if, if, this, was, if this was probably somewhere in the, in the Middle East or somewhere in the desert where you know, the temperature keeps going up, then you would expect that this temperature would continue to rise. But lucky enough, our temperature will not rise to a, a point where it kills us all. After a point, it will plateau and then it will come back down uh, to, to ensure life continuity on Earth. So, so this is the mind frame that we're getting into as we dive into um, graphs, where, wherever it comes down to distance and time. And in this case, temperature and time. This is the mind frame that we want to get in, calculating the gradient as we, as we go on. All right, so we have another scenario coming up. And I, and I think, um, Mr. Matt, do you know Matthew? Yes, Matthew is a good friend of mine. Matthew is a good friend of ours. So tell us, tell us a little bit about, about what Matthew is doing coming up on the next slide. Well, let's find out here. So my friend Matthew, he is moving between a tree and his house. So now we're going to talk specifically about distance and time. We're going to look at some movement, right? And in this scenario, Matthew is up here. Up at the, let's see, this is the top right corner of the screen. And then below, there is a graph that is going to map Matthew's distance over time. So here's what you guys are going to do. You are going to watch the following videos of Matthew's movement, and then you're going to take note of what happens when we stop. Sorry, when Matthew stops, when he goes further away from the center, and when he goes closer to the center. So I want you to watch Matthew very carefully, compare what he's doing to the graph, and then make your little note. Don't tell us yet, you know. Keep your notes with you. And then towards, when we finish looking at the three scenarios, we're going to see what we can observe, all right? So make sure that you have your notepad near you. So you notice here we have three scenarios. We're gonna, you don't have to memorize them because we're going to break them up one by one. So let's look at the first one. So in this scenario, Matthew runs to his house stops for a short while, and then runs back to the starting point, okay? So I want you to look at the video here of Matthew's movement. Remember, while you watch, think about what happens when Matthew moves further away from the center, stops, and then gets back closer to the center. So let's see what happens. Matthew's moving, he's moving further away from where he started, he stops, and then now he's moving back to where he had started. Remember, don't say anything in the chat yet. Just take note of what happens when he moves away, stops, and then comes back. Okay? So I'll give you a Five, I'll give you 10 seconds to write down, write down those notes. Eight, nine, 10. All right. Now let's go to the second scenario. Okay. And here, well, this was from the first scenario. This is just a little snapshot of what it looks like. The lines are looking a little better. And now let's go to scenario B. So in this scenario, Matthew walks a steady pace to his house, and then he walks a steady pace back to the starting point, okay? So remember, remember what we're thinking about? What happens when he moves away from the center, stops, and then comes back to the middle. So let's see what happens. He is going away. He's heading to his house. Not hurrying, though. He's just taking his time. And then as soon as he gets there, he's coming back to the starting point. Doesn't need to go home again. Remember what he forgot. So he comes back to the starting point. Yeah. Right? So again, just take note of what you, what you realize happened. 
And this can kind of give, this is just a little snapshot of the scenario where Matthew had moved and then when he came back. Now here's the third and final scenario. So in this scenario, Matthew stays at the center for a short while, runs to the house, and then walks a steady pace back to the starting point. Now here's what I want you to do. Based on the last two that we did, I want you to make a little sketch in your book of what you think that graph will look like. If you've made the sketch, then just type a Y in the chat for yes, so that I know you have your sketch ready. So we're gonna, I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds to make that sketch. Remember, type a Y in the chat. I'm looking for about two to three people to type a Y. Nothing fancy, just a little something, something, you know? And then we're gonna see what, if what you got is close to what actually happened. So myself and Mr. Wilson, we're looking out for those Ys in the chat. Let's see who has a little sketch based on this scenario here. I know, by now you'd be making a little observations. So let's see how your observations compare to the actual scenario. Let's see, I remember we're looking for the first three people. All right, so in the YouTube chat, I am seeing uh, Geneva Thompson. Hitting us with a Y. Then I'm seeing another, I think this is somebody named Arthur with another Y. Yeah. These are both on YouTube. They, they have the, the orange letter, they are, they are a pink K in circle. I'm not sure the first name, I'm not sure how to pronounce that first name. Don't want to mispronounce anyone's name. But we have two Ys so far. Y. Means uh, what, that about the, are, what about the Zoom crew? Anybody saying Y from there? Um, no, still waiting in the Zoom crew. The, the, it, it sounds like Zoom is fast, but seems like it's not faster than YouTube today. So we are still, we're still waiting, still waiting on the Zoom crew. But so far, YouTube is ahead with two Ys. I know, they, I know they have it. In, I know they have it. I know they have the little sketch with them. So I think right now I'm just going to go ahead with those two Ys. And for everybody else who has their little sketch. So let's see how it compares for this third scenario. Remember, you don't have to be right because we're going to discuss it. So let's see what happens when Matthew stays at the center for a short while, runs to the house, and then walks a steady pace back to the starting point. Your time, Matthew. Matthew's staying for a little bit, he's staying at the center. Boom, then now Matthew is going to run to the starting point, the house. And then he's going to walk a steady pace back to the starting point. So he's taking his time, he's strolling, and now he's, at the now he's back at the starting point. So this would kind of be a little snapshot of Matthew's movement. Now remember those three questions I had asked you. What happens? when he moves away from the starting point, when he stops, and when he gets back closer to the starting point. So let me hear anybody who did their sketch. Does it look like this or not that close? Does it look, did your sketch look like this? Again, you can type a Y to let me know. Even if you didn't type Y the first time. No, Still waiting no. on those responses. Uh, the only response I got was a confirmation that YouTube is indeed faster. So it seems like those on YouTube are more engaged. Well, we have more persons on YouTube. We have 33 as opposed to about 23 in WhatsApp. So yes, the first Y just came in on YouTube coming in from Adana K. Curtis. Then we have Cleon Jardine. Then we have Tamoya Taylor. Then we have... Uh, yeah, the, the YouTube the YouTube chats are are coming through with their wise strong and ahead of the head of the pack. So 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 yes, we 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 have our wise coming on YouTube. I think that's the go ahead, Mr. Mac. The 
they are giving you the signal to go right ahead. You're muted. Oh, sorry about that. You hearing me now though? Yes, loud and clear. All right. So now that we have those wires ready, that means I think you guys are ready to tell me what you observe. But before you tell me, let's just talk about what we're seeing here. This little scenario and this little graph is what we call a distance time graph. And by now, you would have realized that a distance time graph just talks about distance over time. It shows us how far an object has traveled in a given time. And it's a graph showing distance versus time, where distance is represented on the y-axis and time is represented on the x-axis. And I think I saw a really nice explanation here where somebody was talking about the x-axis and the y-axis in the U. Oh, it's always with you. <laughs> well, when I was having a conversation with, I think it was uh, Danielle, Danielle Hodges. She, okay. she was, you know, expressing the, the belief of time being on the x-axis because she believes that time is, the in the, time is independent. Nothing, time depends on nothing, but everything depends on time. So okay. too does the X. Um, so if, if they are both of the same characteristic, then they should both go together. And I, I did agree with her. So I hope Danielle is still there to give us more beautiful insights as the session goes on, because yeah. these are the type of um, viewpoints that we are looking for to show that math is real. Yeah. So that was good. I kind of knew I saw that message. She retracted it. But we're just having that for the persons to hear in the Zoom chat as well. So we put time on our x-axis because it is the independent variable. And even though distance can always change with respect to time, your position can change or remain the same as time elapses. So time continues. So now that we know what that distance time graph is, which is what we just saw, let's ask ourselves the question. What did you notice? So let's first start with what happened when Matthew went further away from his starting point. What did you notice? What did you notice about the line? So well, now I'm looking out in the chat and in the Zoom, uh, in the YouTube and in the Zoom chats to hear what you guys did. Well, well, Mr. Mack, I, I, I believe Mr. Orthodox uh, has, uh, has, has, a, has a response to what was happening with Matthew. It is not specific to the question being asked. No, I'm, I'm assuming that he'll, he'll be answering to that in a little bit. But he was making an observation. He was saying that when Matthew, or when he moves from the starting point, the line increases. And when he, he stops, the line is flat. However, he noticed that when he moves closer back to the starting point, then the line decreases. And that's a very good observation. That's a very objective observation. So so thank you. I would like to pronounce your name properly so you can just shoot me probably your, 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 how you pronounce your first name in the in the YouTube so that way I can give the correct pronunciation. I'm aware that a lot of us, we our social media handles, the names are a little bit fancy. And because mm -hmm. I don't have that fancy voice and that fancy speech and that fancy denunciation, you can just give me the simple pronunciation, all right? So that we are always safe in what I think, I'm I'll, I think I'll work with Orthodox for now until he's ready. Okay. <laughs> but thank you so much. So that is one thing that we observed when he moved, he, he went further away. The slope of the line increases, which is this point that we have right here. So whenever we see a positive slope on a distance time graph, it means that the object is going further away from the starting point. I think he mentioned it in his description as well. That yes, he did. What happened when 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 he stops, the line is flat, right? Or the line is horizontal, we would say. And when he was going back to the starting point, the line had, it, 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 it had a negative slope, which is what would what it would look like right here. So those are the three main observations that we can that we got from our situation with Matthew. Right? Now, I have another question for you guys. I want you to think about the movement that we had uh, while in the video 
compared to the pictures that I showed. You notice that in the video, Matthew was kind of speeding up a little bit and then he slowed down, probably was walking, he, he, he hit his toe, he had to stop, he had to go again, and he was hurrying, he saw something, he got back. So it wasn't really that steady. But the pictures that were shown, they represented straight line or uniform motion, which is another important point that we want to bring up. So in a distance time graph, if the movement is represented by a slant line, that means the motion is uniform or that it is constant. The, the, the distance has a direct relationship with the time. Now I'm going to look out in the chat because I know you guys probably saw a lot of things that we didn't even see. Did anybody notice anything different? Or did anybody notice anything else with our distance time graph? Let me give you guys about 30 seconds to hear from you. Or 20. Or 10. Or 20. Or 20. I think that's the Geneva. Have yes, an I... observation there. Is what, what, coming through? Wait, let's not. I'm not going to say anything about it yet. Let's give the others another 10 seconds, just a little chance to think some more. And then we'll talk about Geneva's and others. Of the nation. Let's see what's up. All right, so Mr. Wilson, what do you see in the chat? All right, so over there on YouTube, I have Geneva Thompson. She, she made a very, a very excellent observation. I'm not sure if, if, if this is the same Dr. Thompson that I know, or, or this is, this is a, a professor already in, in school, but I think she is on the way to, to, to such a life. Well, Dr. Thompson, if I may, she said that the steeper the line, the faster Matthew moved. Steeper the line, the faster Matthew moved. I wonder how she knew that. That's an interesting observation. Very interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. And I want to know if anybody else saw that as well. If you saw that, if you saw the same thing, just type a Y in the chat so that I can know. Because remember, this, work, this workshop is all about you. So I want to make sure that you guys are, if you are checking, if you guys are seeing the same thing. So who else made that observation? All right, so um, Zoom just came alive. <laughs> we are seeing Anika <laughs> Smith. She's saying yes. And I think this is Abe Brissett. Mm -hmm. She's also, or that person is also saying yes. I will not, um, I'll not assume they, boy or girl. Over, over on YouTube, we have Mr. Orthodox coming in with the Y. So they are also on the same, on the same page. Fantastic. So everybody is on the same page then. And thank you all for that. So yes, that is true. A steep slope or the steeper the line, the faster Matthew moves. And then we can assume, we, we, then the converse must also be true. The, a slight slope means that the object must be moving slowly, okay? So those are the main things that we can observe. So you see these things? These are the main principles that we're gonna keep in mind while working with distance time graphs. And now, now that we've identified what a steep and slight slope means, then we've seen what quantity this, re this relates to. Because when we're talking about moving very quickly or slowly, that means we are talking about an object's speed. So the gradient of our line represents the object's speed. You remember earlier we were talking about gradient? This is where it comes back. Because remember that the gradient is equal to the rise over the run, right? And on our distance time graph, remember we said that the y-axis represents the distance and the x-axis represents the time. So since the rise or the y-axis measures the distance and the time, or sorry, the x-axis or the run measures the time, then the slope of the graph would be equal to what? Let me look out in the chat and see if anybody picks that up. 
So what would the slope of the graph be equal to? If on the y-axis is distance and on the x-axis it's time. Hope you guys following what I'm, what I'm saying here. So what would be the slope of the line? Well, if we, if we, let me ask another question. If we're thinking about distance and time, right? So on the y-axis, it's distance. And on the x-axis, it's time. Do you know anything else that is equal to distance over time? We, we have a response, Mr. Mack. We have a response over in YouTube. And here mm -hmm. it is from uh, Somesh Sharma. They are saying, they are giving us in terms of mathematical variables that S is equal to D over T. We also have another, Creon Jardine is saying distance divided by time. Orthodox is coming again saying that S is distant away. What is this S? We need to know what this S is. We have, we have um, others. We have Mr. Orthodox finally revealing what S is, the secret thing that it is speed. We also have in Zoom, Chris is saying, well, Chris is asking if it was speed. Well, well, Chris, you need to tell us, is it speed? <laughs> Quite a few responses. So Indeed. yes, that is, that is correct. So the, the distance over time, distance divided by time is equal to speed. So yes, Chris, it is speed. So that's what the gradient of our distance time graph represents. If you don't make a note anywhere else, you have to make a note for this one specifically. Yeah? So speed, the gradient of the line, represents the object speed. Take a screenshot, take anything that you keep in mind. Because that's very important as we go along. And as we had mentioned before, that means the line slope, whether upward or downward, tells the direction of the travel relative to the starting point. So it all depends on where we start, okay? Now, now that we know that, it's time for us to jump straight into a CSEC style question. So Mr. Wilson, I think you have a CSEC question in your back there that you're ready to share with us. I do, I do. I have one just handy and ready for this type of situation. So here we have a CSEC type question. And we, 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 we brought this question down. We, we had some discussions around this question. And then we say, you know what? Let us make it in such a way that we explore uh, this person's, you know, this particular person. They, they did something on a very special day. They set out on a journey. And this person in question, her name is Ashley. So here we realize that Ashley, she went from town A to, to, to town C. Maybe she went from, um, say for instance, Alexandria to another town C, Clarendon, or to another town C, you know, based on the parish that you're living in. You can think of towns that begin with the letters A and C. But she, she went from town A to town C. And while she was going from town A to town C, this is what her, is what her journey looked like. Now, at this point in time, I may think, or, or some of you may think, how will we look at lines and, and talk about or to think about what is happening? But just keep in mind the things that we would have been discussing already. We were, be, we were thinking about the gradient of the line, what the steepness of the line means, and what a line means if it is steeper than the other, what it means in relation to speed. We are also, we, we also looked at what it means if the line is flat, what is happening where uh, a journey is taken into consideration. So here, we're going to be thinking about Ashley's speed during the different stages of our journey. So of course, let's start with stage one. So take a look at the graph, everyone. Take a look at the graph and talk to us. What do you think? Or I want you to compare Ashley's speed uh, on her journey. So look at stage one. What is happening in stage one? What do you think about Ashley's speed? What do you think about her journey overall in stage one? I'll give you 10 seconds to think 
and then we'll take some responses. So we are looking at stage one. Five, four, three, two, one. Are we ready? So we are thinking I, about Ashley over in stage one. Any responses, Sirma? Yeah, I'm not seeing any yet on YouTube. I think they're they are getting ready to type. Mm -hmm. In Zoom, I'm seeing Natalia, Natalia Mendez is thinking that her speed is accelerating. Okay. Devon Sanders, I hope that I pronounced that right, Devon, is saying that from six to seven, from six o'clock to seven o'clock, she is moving at a fast speed. Okay, interesting. Any, anything over on YouTube? Not yet. As I said, they've taken some time to put their thoughts together. So I know that, oh, oh no, that wasn't really a good thing. Uh, yeah, so not yet, not yet. Okie dokie. Let us go. Yes, no, maybe so. Curtis on YouTube says that in stage one, they are moving slash going. Ashley is moving or slash going. Um, probably Curtis could 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 kind of trim up that answer is in a little way. Are they moving from somewhere? Are they going to somewhere? Yes, right. we know they are moving, but but what is happening? Realize that she started her journey, so. You can imagine that she is, she's at town A, right? What happens? Is she going towards town A? Is she going from town A? How is she moving? This is how we, 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 we paint our answers in mathematics. We are always specific with what we say and how we say it. We answer in such a way that after we would have finished speaking, those in the hearing of our voice, they have no question as to what it is that we really meant to say. And as you were saying, that as we're coming in on YouTube, where Mr. Orthodox says that from six to seven, she traveled that distance of 40 kilometers. Interesting. And Jardine says that her speed seems to be moderate in the first stage. Interesting, interesting. And, and yes, yes to all these answers. And that's a, that's a very good eye, Mr. Orthodox, realizing that hey, she would have traveled a distance of 40 kilometers, leaving from town A to, to wherever she stopped for that first stage. So let, let us proceed. Let us look at the description for stage one. What happened in stage one? Well, in stage one, we realize that she is moving away from the starting point. And this is very important to note because in moving away from the starting point, just as the example with Matthew, we realize that when Matthew moved from that point that he was at first, the, the graph represented this move by showing an upward slope, all right? And then that upward slope, I, I think that someone they made mention that if the upward slope was very steep, it means that he did it very quickly. And if it wasn't so steep, that means he, he would have done it slower. So in this case, we realize that she is indeed moving away from the starting point, all right? No, it's not just Yes. I'm sorry not to cut you, but the YouTube chat is bubbling with some answers. Oh. Afterwards, um, Dana, da, oh, Dana K. Curtis, I hope I pronounced that right, said that she's moving from town A. Darshani said that in stage one, she's moving kind of fast from town A to town C. Geneva said Ashley is going towards the next town. Tamaya said she's going from town A. And then Anderson takes it a step further to say that she takes one hour to cover 40 kilometers. So, Wow. Everybody has an idea about it. <laughs> wow. Wow. I like those responses. One hour to cover 40 kilometers. Is she going very fast? Have you ever covered 
a kilometer in, in, in one hour? Or have you done it quicker? And as you think about these questions, I, there's another question that just popped in my mind. What is the speed limit on our Jamaican roads? What, what, what does the government, how fast does the government say we should travel whenever we are on the highway? Maybe if you, if you know the answer to this question, then you will be able to think of how fast, uh, so for instance, 40 kilometers per hour is relative to what you would have known and what you would have been traveling already. So indeed, the first stage showed that Ashley is moving away from the starting point and she's heading, she's going somewhere. She's going somewhere. Now, as she passes stage one, there's something that happens. But before we, we look at that little space right there, I want us to consider stage two. Do you think you could describe Ashley's speed during stage two? And yes, stage two is right there, right there on that line. How, how, how is it that she is traveling during stage two? Everybody is looking ahead of you. As Jenny Vice saying 60 kilometers per hour. Mr. Orthodox also says 60 kilometers per hour. And in the Zoom chat, Anika Smith Holding is also saying 60. Interesting. So we we, we I, I noticed something from your answers. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you some of the students noticed either. But I'll put it out there just to see. Recall that in stage one someone said that she was traveling at a rate of 40 kilometers per hour. Now in stage two, we realize that she is traveling at a rate of 60 kilometers per hour. What does this say to you? What does this say to you? Can you now give a better comparison of stage two as opposed to stage one? In the chat, Geneva Samson is saying she is going much faster because the slope is steeper in stage two. Okay. So that's one way to look at it, by looking from the perspective of the slope. But what of the values that you gave me? You gave me 60 kilometers per hour, and then you gave me, well, you gave me 40 kilometers per hour first, and then you gave me 60 kilometers per hour. What of the, can you speak from the perspective of the numbers? In on YouTube, Claire and Daddy seem to answer you, he says, as she says, in stage two, she covered 60 kilometers in one hour. Thus, I would say she is moving faster as compared to the first stage. Darshani agrees with him. And Anika Smith holding from Zoom is say that she, she's going much faster by, her speed is, I think she said she, her speed is much faster by 20 more. Okay, so she she's going. Mr. Arthur, sorry, Mr. Arthur that also says that she covers 60 kilometers within the hour. I guess he's comparing it to 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, okay. So here we realize that there's an increase in speed, not just by the values, not just by the mathematical values, but as indicated by the slope or the steepness of the lines. So here we have two ways to corroborate her going faster in stage two. So let, let us put, bring up that description right now on screen for stage two. We realize in stage two, that she is moving faster, not just faster, but you realize that the line is also increasing in height. So she is going further and further away from where she started, right? Now, we saw those descriptions in stage one and two. So by those description, I know that you are even ready, even more sharp to describe stage three. So don't all go at the same time, even though we know that it will record who went first, second, or third. But now I want you to turn your gauge to stage three. Can you describe stage three just by looking at it? Can you describe stage three in comparison to stages one and two? What is happening in stage three? What is happening in stage three? So stage three is that 
line all the way to the right. And we, we realize that more than one things are happening over there at stage three. So remember the question talked about, she went from town A to town C. And at the end of stage two, there is the letter C. That means she would have arrived at town C. So after she would have arrived at town C, what happened? So I'm giving you hints and cues as to what to look out for. In no, no, you don't yes. have to give them any more hints and cues. Quite a few responses here. Let me read them for you. Then you read this thinking that it's decreasing. Um, I, some per, all right, let me, let me go through them. The, uh, Curtis is saying that at stage three, she's returning to town A. Okay. The same Geneva is think well, Geneva is saying that the person is going back to rest. So Ms. Sharma is thinking that the speed decreased uniformly. Jenny, Geneva Thompson changed and said she's going back to her starting point. And the same, I'm seeing similar responses in Zoom. So half of the respondents are saying that she started to slow down or her speed decreased, while the other half is saying that she's returning to tone A. Okay, okay, okay. Anybody realize something else with tone C? Imagine you went, you went for something down the road. On your way back, you, you usually do you usually stop. So imagine you, 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 you're, you're going out and it's, it's close to curfew time mm -hmm. because... That, that, that this graph, you realize that it ended at 10, ended at 10 o'clock. The, 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 the graph did not say AM or PM. So let us not speculate as to night or day. But if it was night, when she finished her business at Town C, you realize that she needed to get home by 10. Did she get home in any ways, whether it be speedily, did she stop along the way? Does the, can, you, can you tell any of this? just by looking at stage three. Um, from response to that, Jardim uh, is saying that at stage three, she is moving back to her starting point at a moderate speed. Dashani said her speed increased as she was returning to town A. Mr. Orthodox says that her speed increases when returning to town C. And some students are thinking, well, Jenny is thinking that she stopped. Some others are saying that no, she didn't stop at all on the way back to um, back to town A. And then okay. Anika Smith holding is thinking that she sped up after she finished taking her rest at town C. Okay. All right, so hit me with that description for town C. And um, we have a little animation coming up for you now in a little while. But we realize that stage three of the journey, she's actually moving the fastest. She's heading back home. She's heading back to the starting point at A. And two things tells us that she's moving the fastest in stage three. The first one is the slope of the line. And um, the second thing that tells you she's moving back to town A is the way that the line is, 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 the steepness of the line, the direction in which it, it is sloped. It is sloped downward. Now students, I know that you might be looking mm -hmm. at this graph and you might be tempted to say that, hey, because the line is going down means that she's slowing down. No, not necessarily. That's not what this graph, that's not how you interpret this graph. The, the, the how fast or how slow you can tell by the, 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 the gradient of the line. Notice I, I realized in some of the responses that mention was made about the times she stopped. Now, if at the times that she stopped, I could ask you, is she traveling at any speed when she stopped? And of course the question, the answer to that question would have been no. And the mere fact that when she stopped, she's not traveling at any speed and you realize that it's indicated by a uh, horizontal line, it would tell you that once the line has a gradient going up or a slope up or a slope down, it does not indicate the, the, the slowing down. It, what it indicates is movement, right? And the, the, the degree to which it slopes tells you the, the degree to which is, the movement is, is being, um, is happening. So let us look at the little animation that we have. Let us look at the animation that we have. 
to to basically describe uh, the journey that Ashley that Ashley took. So here we go. Pay attention to the little green dot. Pay attention to the little green dot that will be used to describe Ashley's Ashley's journey. Pay and attention to the seed as well. Yes. Mr. Wilson, let me just add to it for any because there are quite there are some questions and discussion in the chat. So I'm just asking those persons. Let's look at this and then see if you still have your question to ask. Right? Okay. So there is no movement. Why? Now we're back to movement again. There is no movement. Why? If you're not moving, what are you doing? Wow. Look at that green dot go. I hope she do, I hope the police don't stop her and ask her for her driver's license based on how far she was going right there. So that is that is the, the synopsis of what occurred in terms of an animated level. So Mr. Mack, do they still have those questions? If after watching that animation, your questions were answered, just type a Y. If not, go ahead, feel free to post your questions once again and we will, we will address them. So if that animation helped you to, to, to answer your question, if, if, that, if that satisfied your curiosity, just go ahead and drop a Y in any one of the chats. So I am seeing in the Zoom chat, Yvonne, Anika, and Brissett are saying, are typing Ys in the chat. Uh, over at YouTube, I'm trying to, give me a minute here. I think Geneva was asking, what about the horizontal line? I think mm -hmm. you would have mentioned that it was, I think that question was before the animation. I don't think it applies here. I think she's saying something. No, but she's talking mm -hmm. to Tamaya. That's right, Geneva. Let us know. Darshani says, yes, everything is good. Okay, nice, nice. So the, 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 a, a graph like this, a distance time graph like this, it is able to tell us a lot. And anyone who goes on any journey, as long as you're able to, 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 as long as you know the distance it takes to cover that journey, and as long as you know the time elapsed on that journey, you can, you can do a graph like this. If you know the distance from your, where you live to school, you can do a graph like this. As a matter of fact, Anything at all, any, any, any sort of movement that you take, you're able to map or you're able to graph that movement. That is the power that mathematics allows through the usage of distance time graphs. And from this graph, I'm sure that a lot of you would be able to write even a paragraph, even a story. So if on the English exam, you got a math graph, I know that you could write a story from that graph and get full marks. Don't think that math is only limited to math alone. Math is in everything. Every subject you do, I can tell you about the mathematics in that subject. So we realize that during the different stages, stages one, two, and three, traveling is being done. Whenever you saw that horizontal line, it means that she would not be moving. She would not be traveling. So she, she maybe stopped at town A or she stopped between the way of town A to town C to do some shopping. And while she stopped, while she stopped the car, the, 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 the car in of, in of itself was at rest. So that horizontal line is reflecting those points where no movements were taking place. If you want to think about it as a lockdown, as a curfew, yes, those were curfew hours, no movement. So as, as, as listed by the government currently, you know that any time after eight o'clock, your, 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 your distance time graph, it should be a flat line. You should not be moving relative to being outside of your own home. So you can think about those flat lines as moments of lockdown where they're 
is no movement. So unless you're an essential worker, at this at this point, I think you're all students and um, students. You're not so essential yet. So so for you, it would be flat lines. It would be horizontal lines. I hope I would have answered all your questions. As we know, seek to look at the speed of the different stages from a mathematical point of view. So no, we have the ideas, but we want to put some numbers to those ideas. And I think that some of you would have already calculated some of the speeds for the different stages. So we will first look at stage one. Any, any questions? I see, I see someone's chat box highlighting. I'm not sure if they are opening their mic to speak. No, no. All right, all right, let's go. So we want to think about Ashley's speed during stage one. Remember, we talked about a few things. We talked about the distance that was covered and we talked about the time that elapsed while she covered that distance. Now, if we know the distance and we know the time as was posted in the chat earlier. So if you're if you curious and you scroll up in the chat, you will see where many pointed out the, the, the idea of speed being distance divided by time. So what was the distance covered during stage one? So just asking about that question again, we got that answer and we realized that it was 40 kilometers. You will see that animation coming in on the screen. And the time elapsed was an hour. So if we know the distance and we know the time, we have no issues in calculating the speed. And uh, any responses, what do you think the speed is? And I want the correct units. I want to know how far she's traveling and how, how far she's traveling and what time it takes to travel that distance. Distance over time. What is her speed? during stage one of the journey. And I know the moment you would have calculated stage one's journey, stage one speed, sorry, you'll be able to do for stage two and three as well. So let's go, let's go. Anyone in the chat, Mr. Mark, what are they saying? Do and we have- Mr. Orthodox is saying 40 kilometers. 40 kilometers, okay. So he's confirming the distance. So that's just a, uh, that's just a distance. Remember, speed is 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 of two dimensions. We need um, not just a distance, but we need something else. In the Zoom chat, Chris has an interesting question here. He asks, would you convert the time? And then Michaela asks for Michaela answers 40 kilometers per hour. Curtis also answers 40 kilometers per hour on the YouTube chat. Right, so I'm, I'm curious with Chris's question as well. Would you convert the time? Convert the time to what exactly, Chris? What unit would we convert that time, that time to? Are you thinking seconds? Are you thinking seconds, Chris? Minutes? Hmm, interesting. All right, Chris, I am giving you a personal homework. All right, um, if, if, if someone at home owns a motor vehicle, I want you, after the session is completed, to ask for an opportunity to look behind the steering wheel of that motor vehicle. There will be a little, a little dash display with some units on it. And I want you to look closely for one of those units. And you can even ask to which of those little displays tell the speed of the vehicle. And I want you to look even closer for the units that is stipulated. There is no issue calculating speed in terms of minutes, but the standard as opposed to the, the, the wanting to do something, the standard to represent speed is either using the units of hour or the units of seconds. And we use seconds when we're talking about, about meters. But that's my little homework for you, Chris. If no one, if no one owns a motor vehicle, that's okay. The next time you, you take a taxi, um, ensuring that all protocols are in place. Do the same thing. Just take a look behind the, the driver's steering wheel and you will see it. Or you have the power of Google. 
you can check it out. All right, so the speed during the first stage of the journey is indeed 40 kilometers per hour. And here comes the calculations right now. So we are seeing that we think about the 40 kilometers and we literally divide it by that hour. So at the end of the day, we have 40, a rate of 40 kilometers per hour. And that is how we read it, right? 40 kilometers per hour, right? Next up, let us look at stage two. And stage two is that other section where movement is taking place. You will notice that the middle section right there, the, the horizontal line, there's a circle going around it. It is showing that point, as we discussed, that point of rest, right? So in everything, rest is important. So here we go, stage two. What was the distance covered in stage two? What was the time elapsed? in stage two. Looking out over in both of the chats, what was the distance covered in stage two? They went from a distance of what to a distance of what? What was that distance? And how long did they take to cover that distance? And you know, for me, this gives a lot of insight of what speed is. They, Quicker you can cover a particular distance, it means that you are faster than whomever you are comparing your, your rate to. So what is that distance? What is that time? I want those two answers. And then the third answer is the speed. So I want to see the, the distance coming in first, the distance that was covered first. Then I want to see the time. I want to see these answers with their units. And then after I would have seen these two answers, I want to see the speed of the of the stage two. What is the speed of stage two? So these three things we want to see. The distance covered, one. The time it took, two. And three, the rate at which that distance was covered, which is reflected in the speed of the journey of stage two. So I'll give those over on YouTube time to drop in their responses. Those on Zoom, time to drop in their responses. Talk to me, talk to me. So what's the distance? What are they saying, Mr. Mack? Brissett on Zoom is saying 60 kilometers is the distance and one hour is the time. On YouTube, Mr. Orthodox is saying 40 kilometers to 100 kilometers. So it took, it took 60 kilometers within an hour. And then the rest of respondents have the speeds of 60 kilometers per hour. Okay, so if we should put all of those responses together, we realize that during stage two of the journey, they would have made up going from 40 to 100, which is covering 60 kilometers, and they, she did it within an hour. So her speed, her speed right there is 60 kilometers, 60 kilometers per hour. And of course, this is assuming that, assuming that Ashley is on good road, right? So she can take her time and travel 60 kilometers per hour. We know that in Jamaica, sometimes, you know, you have to change your speed because there is something in the road that is that is um, allergic, that, like, that your car is allergic to. So you have to change your speed to, to take into consideration those things in the road. I will not say, I will not say what. I know that you all know what that is. So at the end of the day, we realized that during the during stage two, her speed was 60 kilometers per hour. And of course, it is at the end of this stage that she would have arrived at town C. After she arrived at town C, what did she do? What did she do? So having been in town C, we realize that there is another, another moment where the line is horizontal. And the horizontal line, as we discussed, it means that she would have rested. So this is the point at which she took a rest. Now, I could even ask more questions based on this graph, right? If she went on the road to do business, we realized that after stage one, she probably had more to take care of at stage one. So if she was going to the supermarket and she was taking gas at the gas station, maybe Ashley wanted gas 
And on her way to the gas station, she said, you know what, why not stop at the supermarket and get some grocery? So you would realize that the supermarket rest time or the supermarket stop time is longer than that of the gas station. And um, do you know how long she stopped at each, each rest? Do you know how long each rest period was? Anybody? Don't worry, that question will be asked pretty soon. Any, any, any questions, any comments so far from anyone in the chat, Mr. Mark? Yeah, in the chat, Sanders is saying that she rested for 15 minutes. She's ah. referring to um, Town C. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful, beautiful. So we, we realize that that is what is happening. So after all of that is said and done, hello, it is time to go home. And I, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe like us, Ashley needed to get home by 10 o'clock. And if she's out on the road and that time is up, she's probably there from what, um, 9, 8.45? Is that the time? She's probably there around 8.45. So 8.45, she just get gas. She needs to get home by, by 10 o'clock. What, what, what needs to happen? So here, we're going to now be thinking about the third stage of the journey, stage three. So once more, students, what is, what is, is her speed during the third stage of the journey. And in telling me her speed, I want to know how far she traveled. And I want to know the time it took for her to travel that particular distance. If I could just add right here, I remember in the chat, uh, Summit was asking a, a question about this same state. So I think this would be, uh, this is, he's gonna see that now. He was asking, if I go back, mm -hmm. Look into the chat. Just give me one minute. She, he, Somesh asks, did she travel a hundred kilometers from point C to A? Oh, interesting question, Somesh. Think about it this way: if it took her a hundred kilometers to get to town C, then how far should she travel to get back where she was in town A? Right? Have you ever? Have you ever um took? Well, well, it's crazy to ask, but did you ever count the number of steps it took to took you to maybe get to get to school? Probably not. But I would I would assume that the same distance it 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 takes from your home to school, it is the same distance it takes from school to your home. I would worry one day if when I am heading home, I the distance shortened. Maybe an earthquake happened and part of the road was you know. The country was kind of put together somewhat, but I would worry if the if the if the distance shortened or the distance increased, I would probably be going to the wrong house and I would get in trouble. But if we took a hundred kilometers to get to town C, then from town C back to town A would have been the same. And I, I, I probably I gave away the answer a while ago in answering his question. But what is what is what is the distance, what is the speed? What in is the that? chat? In the chat, somebody was answering. They said, Arthur that said that she traveled 100 kilometers over time of an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, brilliant. And you will see that answer being corroborated with the, we have, a, we have the answer on screen. You will see that for a tone from town C back to town A during stage three, the distance traveled was 100 kilometers and that took one hour, 15 minutes. And here we notice that our time is in terms of hour and minutes. Is there any way we can think about this in terms of hours alone? Is there any way? So no, I, I can even go back to the suggestion that was being made earlier when someone asked about conversion. So what is what is an hour and 15 minutes in an hour? We just we don't want any minutes in our in our in our in our result. We just want an hour. So what is 15 minutes in terms of an hour? What fraction of an hour is 15 minutes? Let me see who first can drop me that response. What fraction of an hour is 15 minutes? Any responses uh, uh, first to it? Geneva Thompson is typing 15 divided by 60. 
minutes mm -hmm. to hours, and Natalia Mendez is saying a quarter. A quarter, that's right. That's right, Natalia, that's right, Geneva. We realize that 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour or 0.25 of an, of an hour. So it is that idea that we will use in an effort to calculate our speed. So our speed here would be our distance divided by our time, which is 100 kilometers divided by one and a quarter hour, which is the same as 1.25 hours, giving us a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. So that is, that is our speed during stage three. Now, if you have all three speeds, I think you would even be able to even better compare the speeds of stage one, stage two, and stage three. If I remember correctly, stage one speed was 40 kilometers per hour. Stage two speed was 60 kilometers per hour. And then stage three, we have a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. So during which stage is she going the fastest? It speaks for itself stage three. As a matter of fact, in stage three, we realize that she is traveling twice as fast as she traveled during stage eight, so stage stage one. So maybe, maybe she really needed to get back home once she finished her, her business, All right? No, any questions? Let, if, any questions before I go on? Any insights? Is there anyone who, who is not understanding? Is, is there anyone who is understanding even better? I think that question is not, is not asked as often as in class. They only ask about those who is not understanding. But who, who, who would have gotten a better understanding of what it means to interpret a distance time graph? All right, so we do realize that just by looking at the graph, just by looking at the nature of the lines, we are able to draw different conclusions about what is happening. And once we're able to draw those conclusions, we're able to tell a story or we're able to fully understand what is taking place whenever we see or whenever we see a distance time graph. And don't be afraid. Any other distance time graphs you see, don't be afraid to think of a storyline, think of what is happening, and then do your interpretation of, of the graph. Um, um, to Darshani and Geneva, so that they have a better understanding, so that they are clear. Nice. Um, Orthodox is being asked where he's thinking of stage one and stage two adds up to the final stage. Probably we can. Adds up to the final stage. Hmm. Think about it this way, this way, orthodox. Um, think of Ashley's journey as a story. She she went, she, she wanted to go to the gas station at Town C. On her way to the gas station, she stopped at the supermarket, which you know will take a little bit longer than at the gas station. After she was finished with the gas station or finished at the gas station. She, she left and, and headed home. Uh, would, would, would her journey or would her first two stops add up to the third stop? Uh, not really in terms of distance. She would have covered the same distance, right? Because if it takes 100 kilometers to get to Town C where the gas station is, then of course, in heading back, she would have to travel the same distance. If she traveled a distance that was less, she wouldn't reach home. If she traveled a distance that was more, she would pass her house or she would pass where she's going in town A. So, so just think about it in some practical terms and you will realize that, that it opens, opens in front of you just like a flower, a flower that is blooming, right? I hope that would have, would have um, answered your, your query, Mr. Orthodox. We can, we can collaborate that over in YouTube. Yeah. Do you understand? Hey, is that what added with regards to distance, so probably oh. statement before was incomplete. <laughs> okay, so I think yeah. I would have answered because I, I ensure to include all possibilities of what his his question. So I hope you get it now. Um, feel free to say yes, feel free to say no, feel free to expound a little bit more on what you really meant so that we can answer even, even better. 
Now, for this, for this next scenario that is coming up, we have a, a distance time graph. And um, we want you to really and truly interpret what is going on. So we have a car that is traveling from one point to the other. And then there are some questions that are being asked based on the, 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 the journey that is take, that, that the car took. All right, so here we have the car. Here we have our little graph, nice and stepped and set up. And uh, we, we can look at this question. So go ahead, take a screenshot of this one. Take a screenshot of this one. We'll just run the questions real quick and then we'll go over to another, another question. All right, so take a screenshot, take a screenshot. As a matter of fact, we're on YouTube, it's being recorded. So what you could do is just rewatch the video. And as you watch, you just challenge yourself. You pause the video and you try to answer each question before they, they come up, All right? So it, it's just about four questions. The last one is coming up now. That's the last question. All right, so that is what our graph would look like. So we have another question coming up for you now, another scenario, Lindsay, she, Lindsay, she did, she did a little job. And um, Lindsay is another friend of Mr. Mack. So I, I would do a very great injustice to Lindsay if I did not allow Mr. Mack to talk about what happened here. So go ahead, Mr. Mack, take it away. All right, so let's see, let's see what's going on with Lindsay here. So in this scenario, Lindsay ran because now we want to be able to describe the distance time graphs accurately because after this we're going to jump straight into two C set questions. Okay, so this graph represents Lindsay's time and distance during a 10k run. And I want you to tell me how you would describe the way Lindsay ran her race. So for this one, I'm going to give exactly one minute. I'm going to look for the first two or three descriptions in the chat okay and we're going to i just want you to describe it in the best way that you can so i'll give you about one minute remember your description is going to be different from everybody else's so don't mind there is there, we have an opportunity to give different responses but let me see what you're thinking Look and see if we get any descriptions either on YouTube or on Zoom. I think uh, or what the what the or, or it looks like how much All right, Mr. Mark. We indeed we have a description coming through over on YouTube. We have Mr. Orthodoxy. You know, I think she I think he knows Lindsay, you know, because his description is somewhat <laughs> somewhat spot on. He said she started off extremely fast <laughs> and then she slowed down and in the end she gradually you know re-engaged her speed once again and um yes i think mr orthodox is indeed in tune with what is happening with lindsay and he might have even said something that everybody else was thinking um we have geneva thompson coming through she said he she said at the start <coughs> lindsay ran fast at some point, she slowed down, because remember, this is a 10K, so she can run it like a 100 meter. So at some point, she slowed down, and then she slowed down even a little more. She then picked up the pace and, and a little. She did, well, she then picked up the pace a little, and then she sped up some more. Over on Zoom, we have Devon saying that at the start, she ran at a high and steady. She ran at a high speed, and she ran steadily. 
Then she slowed down a little until she reached a point where she took a rest <laughs> and then built up her speed again. So, so those, three, those three descriptions, I think, are, are, are on point. Yes, I'd say the same. I think so too. And I like where, because this is how we run races. We start out fast, we full of energy, and eventually we slow down, we have to rest a little while, and we go again. I like that word that um, Devon used in the Zoom as well, that they, she, she took a rest. So she stopped for a little while, and then she started again. And I love all the other comments in the YouTube chat. So thanks a lot, guys. So that's key. We have to be able to talk about our distance time graph, because no, that means when we're working a question, so we work a question and we work the gradient of one line and we got it steeper than the other. But then when we look at the gradient, it's not looking steeper. So that can help us to make sure that we are right as we're going along. So now we're going to go to a big bad seasick question that's going to be right here. Notice anything similar about, anything looks familiar about this big bad teaser question? Have you ever seen it anywhere before? No, it a little familiar. I is the first to see anything ever like this before. Well, we have in the chat, um, Avai Brissett, he's saying that it's the same diagram as before. Exactly, exactly. So the question that we just did a while ago is the same thing here. It's a CC question. So basically, you guys are ready for the distance time graph on CXCs. Clap yourself, pat, your, pat yourself on the back. Orthodox, exactly right. Orthodox over on YouTube, Mr. Mack, is saying that it, it, it looks like Ashley's journey. <laughs> I would say <laughs> so too. And then we have Darshin is saying, we just did this. <laughs> She's laughing to herself. Yeah. And then um, Geneva Thompson is saying she saw it already. Uh, she said she did it with her math teacher and Orthodox is doing a little dance. But this is the idea, students. You, you, you practice so much that after a while, nothing seems new to you. Mm -hmm. That is so true. So now we can go through this question just like what we just did the one before. Well, we've already done it. So for example, when it says to state the time of day at which the car arrived at town C, we already know that. Because we spoke about it here. Who can remind me in the chat? Who can remind me in the chat? All right, over in the chat, I see Avaya Brissett. She's telling that the time that the car arrived in town C was about eight, about eight fifteen, and um, it's close to eight fifteen. Brittany is saying that it's eight thirty. Michaela mm -hmm. is saying eight thirty. Over in the chat on YouTube, we have Geneva saying that the car arrived at eight thirty. Orthodox agreeing with Geneva is saying eight thirty, and Darshin coming through with another eight thirty. Yes, very good, guys. It would be eight thirty. So, Brissett, you just have to be a little careful when you look here and you notice the increment. So, this time would be 815, and then this one would be 830. Right? So, that's the time of the, the car arrived at Town C. Now, how about the second one? Calculate the total time in minutes for which the car stopped during the journey. Who can tell me that in the chat? What was the total time for which the car stopped during the journey? All 
All right, so we have coming through on Zoom, we have Davon, he's telling us that the car stopped for 45 minutes. Uh, Geneva or over there on YouTube saying that the car stopped for 45 minutes as well. And I, I can almost bet that um, we will have about four more responses from Orthodox, from Darashin and from, from Danik saying, saying 45 minutes. Here we have Cleon saying 45 minutes, Orthodox coming in, as I said, 45 minutes, predictable. <laughs> and we have, we have Ninth Wonder, a new, a new entrance in the answering scenario with 45 minutes as well. So all of these students, they are indeed on point. They know, they know the answers to all the questions even before we, we ask them. That's right, that's right. Very good, guys, very good. Now let's look at the third question, or the third part of the question, which asks us, determine the constant speed of the car during stage two of the journey. I know you guys are gonna come with it. So I remember, I think, I think we even worked this, out, worked this one out together. So, you know what, because I remember you guys did so well with this one. I can just, because we did it already, um, where we found that the distance traveled was 60 kilometers, the time taken was an hour, so we figured out that the speed was 60 kilometers per hour. So I remember you guys did that one. Indeed, and Geneva Thompson over there on YouTube, she just dropped that 60 kilometers per hour. Fantastic. So they are, they are indeed orthodox coming through again with another 60 kilometers per hour. So I think they're just waiting on that <laughs> last question. Uh, we have Chrisante Booth saying 60 kilometers per hour and Darashin saying 60 kilometers per hour as well. So they are all in agreement. Very nice. Now let's go to the final part of the question, which asks, to calculate the average speed of the car for the time during which it was moving. So now, this one is a little different than the ones we did before, but nevertheless, we can still do it together. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves, if we're talking about average speed, that means we need to think about the total distance that was taken and the total time that was taken. Yeah? Because you remember the average, this is the best value that describes all of these speeds that we found. Now, let's think about it. If it's the total distance related to the total time, we need to find that total distance during which the car was moving and the total time during which, is, during which it was moving. So let's start with that first one. What is the total distance? What is the total distance that the car, during which the car was moving? Let me see if somebody can put that in the chat. All right, so over on YouTube, we have some responses coming in for the, the average mm -hmm. speed of the journey for which the car is moving. And we have uh, Geneva Thompson saying 61.54 kilometers mm -hmm. per hour. And then we have orthodox saying it's 100 kilometers per hour divided by four hours. Well, 100 kilometers, sorry, divided by four hours. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you guys for your responses. Now there's something that I want us to identify because I think I know why Mr. Orthodox was thinking that as well. But let's think about all of the times that the car was moving, right? So it was moving during stage one. How far did it move? It moved 40 kilometers. During stage two, how far did it move? It moved 60 kilometers. Did it move at any other time during the journey? If so, how much are we? Oh, Mr. It Mark, we have Danique. Curtis saying that it's 200 kilometers. I guess mm. she's correcting what was said from, from before. So I wanted, I wanted Danik's um, answer to be, and then Orthodox is saying, oh, it was 200 kilometers. 
uh, he calculated the rest also. So let us see, let us see students. Good looking out. These are the things you have to look out for. Yes, fantastic. So that we also have that distance that he traveled to get back home, which was that 100 kilometers. So the total distance would be the sum of all these distances, which would be 200 kilometers, 40 added to 60 added to 100. So that's our total distance traveled. Now, what was the total time taken during which the car was moving? What was the total time taken? Total time I am seeing on our Zoom chat, we have Davon saying, I think Davon is saying three hours, 15 minutes. Yes, he just confirmed. He's saying three hours, 15, 15 minutes. Over on YouTube, I think they are just mopping up some of their answers. And then we have Geneva Thompson coming over with 3.25 hours. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's see, let's see. So now we have to be very careful. Remember what we have here highlighted during the time which it was moving. Here, it was moving during stage one. So that's an hour. It was also moving during stage two. So remember, we have this rest period here that we would not include because it was not moving at that time. So it was moving again here at stage two, which is another hour. And then it was finally moving again during stage three. In between those times, we would not include that rest. So that's another hour and 15 minutes. Therefore, that total time, yes, it is true. That would be three hours and 15 minutes or three and a quarter hours. So now that we have the total time and the total distance during the time it was moving, then we can calculate its average speed because that means the average speed will be the total distance divided by the total time, which we found to be 61.5 kilometers per hour to the nearest um, one decimal place. Yeah. So that's how, we, so remember, I think the two key things coming out here we have to think about when we want to find that average speed. And two, we have to think about that total distance. Don't only consider the time that he moved to where he was going, but the time that he took to come back, if specified as a part of the journey, right? That's right, that's right. And Geneva, Geneva reposted. We remember Geneva, you are the one who posted 61.54 kilometers per hour from before so she posted back her answer I, 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 I'm, I'm guessing she she thought that we forgot that she posted her answer but no Geneva we saw that answer earlier and you are now just reminding us same to Chrysanthe Booth just posting the answer of 61.5 kilometers per hour and I like students the fact that you are um, attending to precision where you are including not just the units but the precise time or the precise speed of this particular journey. All right, all right. Very, very good, very good. Now students, guess what? It's your time. It's your time to answer um, a, a CSEC question on your own. So Mr. Wilson is gonna help you with this one, but before he starts, we're going to give you about three minutes think time, and then we're going to go through it together. So we're gonna turn on our timer for three minutes, and if you've completed A, B, and C, don't put your answers in the chat just yet. Just type a Y so that we know that you are finished. So we're going to give you about two to three minutes, okay? So get started. Remember, we're just thinking about all of what we know and did so far.
Oh, looking in the chat, I see Geneva is asking for somebody to read what's on the screen. Oh, and Camille was asking if she's able to see now. If not, then we can read it. But let's know if they see. Let us know if they see. Remember, guys, we have about a minute left. If you're not finished in time, don't worry about it. Just work at your own pace. And uh, we're gonna just we're gonna briefly discuss. All right. So right now, King Orthodox is saying that he's ready. All right. Let's see. Let's see. We have about. 45 or 30 seconds left. Let's see who else. Oh, Geneva, still not seeing it. All right, let me quickly read it for you. It says, the graph below represents the five-hour journey of an athlete. A, what was the speed during the first two hours? B, what did the athlete do between two and three hours after the start of the journey? and see what was the speed on the return journey, okay? So what was the speed during the first two hours? What did the athlete do between two and three hours after the start? And what was the speed on the return journey? All right, Ms. John to put it in the chat as well. So it's there for us. I noticed Darshani and Chrisante are ready as well. They have some responses. So we'll give the other just 15 more seconds and then we'll jump right into it. So we'll see, you ready? Ready and waiting. All right, students, so we are thinking about the speed during the first two hours, right? So here we have a five hour journey of an athlete and we are thinking about the speed during the first two hours. And of course, you know where to look for the hours. The hours can be found on the horizontal or the X axis where time is as is X independent. So, what are your answers? You said you were ready. So drop your answers. What are your answers? Talk to me, Mr. Mark. Where are they? In Zoom? Are they in YouTube? Are they outside my door? Where are they? Talk to me. Michaela is ready and waiting. She says six kilometers per hour. I think the others are about to type there. They're just about to type. So I'm going to give them just 10 seconds more. I know they have it, you know. I know the answer is there. They just don't type it yet. All right, King Orthodox is thinking that the athlete traveled two kilometers over two hours. Darshani Persaud and King Orthodox and Geneva all type six kilometers per hour. Six kilometers per hour. And all of those answers are indeed correct. Yes, um, Orthodox, he, his might not have been um, simplified or reduced, but he, if you should divide that 12 kilometers by those two hours, he would realize that he would get the same response of six kilometers per hour. So yeah, students, he did that. He did, he did that, nice. Yeah. So students, did you see your answer looking like this after you would have saw the 12 kilometers, the two hours. Does it look like this? Awesome, great job, great job. I know that you are up and ready. So what of the second question? The second question, the second question asked, what did the athlete do between two and three hours after the start of the journey? So between two and 
three hours, and I, I would even say two and probably three and a half hours. What was he doing? What was he doing between two and a um, little bit over three hours? So three and a half hours. What was he doing? In the chat, Michaela said that he rested. Geneva is also saying that he rested. He indeed, he indeed rested. So, so that section that you're looking at is right up there. So between two and three and a half hours, we realize that the athlete is indeed resting as indicated by that horizontal line. So by now students, you should know what a horizontal line means. Whenever you see a distance time graph, you should know what a steep slope means whenever you see a distance time graph. And you should know what a line means when it's not so steeply sloped on a distance time graph. Finally, finally, we have another leg of the journey. And the question here is what was the speed on the return on, in this particular journey? All right, right away. Whoa, Michaela is on fire. She says eight kilometers per hour. So that's speed. And then YouTube is incoming. Incoming. Give them about a few seconds. All right. Curtis Talk to me. What answer did they get? Curtis is thinking 48 kilometers per hour. Uh, so, and um, Darshani Prasad also says eight kilometers per hour. Eight kilometers per hour. Awesome. And you would realize, students, that on the return leg of the journey, we have a speed of calculated by showing a distance of 12 kilometers. Once you divide that by a time of one and a half hours or 1.5 hours, we realize that we get a speed of eight kilometers per hour. What answer did you get? Yes, you, what answer did you get? Did you get that correct answer? If you did, you know, we can give this video a thumbs up. You can hit that bell notification and you can share this link to a friend, to tell a friend, because this is on YouTube and it will always be available. Uh, right now, we have what we consider something to, to test your knowledge, to test what you have learned so far. So if you have your smartphones, you can pop them out right now. And you see that barcode? If you have that barcode read on your smartphone, yes, go ahead and scan it. It will send you to a special location where you can show us that you know what you are doing. You can show us that you are confident, that you are ready to take on this exam whenever it, it, it comes around. So go ahead and scan that barcode reader. Don't be, don't, please remember to, to like and subscribe to the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information YouTube webpage so that anything that we do, once we go live, you will get that notification. Once you hit that notification bell and you will know to jump over to us and uh, log on. Do we have anything else for them, Mr. Mack? I think we do. Yes, we have. We Hopefully everybody had a chance to take that, to, to, to scan. Um, we're just going to try and put the link in the chat soon. But we also have an evaluation form that we want to scan as well. You can tell them a little about it, Mr. OK. So by now, the, the post test should be posted in both on both chats. in. YouTube and on Zoom, you can hit follow that link for that uh, for that post test. That's just to test what you know. Immediately after or before you look at the post test, there's also the evaluation form, which is what you're seeing. Now you can go ahead and scan that. Once you scan that, it will take you to a form that you will fill out. You're basically telling us, what is it that you experienced from this session? Read the form carefully. It has different options. You can say strongly disagree, strongly agree, agree, 
don't agree. This, there, there are a lot of op options there. So go ahead, read carefully, fill out the evaluation form. Um, remember to complete your post test to check yourself and to ensure that you are up to speed with what is happening. Remember students, if you practice, you will do well. There's no doubt. All right, we are about at the end of our session. Session ends at five. So I would recommend up until that time, you know, take the time to fill out that evaluation and as well as to complete your process. Don't worry. When I say post test, you might be fretting about it a little bit. It's just a few questions, few multiple choice questions. You just click here, click there. By the time you know it, you are finished because guess what? You already know what distance time graphs are about, are all about our travel time graphs. You know what they are all about. So students, until next time, as I always say, keep practicing. I, I'm not sure if Mr. Mack has anything to say right before we go and allow you to complete. Nah, that, 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 that covers it. Thanks again for coming, guys. I remember, keep practicing. Keep practicing. All right, students, until, until next time. Hold on a minute, sir.